Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we are mainly going to talk about acute rhinitis, its types, causes, clinical features, complications and treatment. So let's get started. In the word rhinitis, rhin refers to the nose and itis means inflammation. So rhinitis is basically any kind of inflammatory condition of nasal mucosa. Acute means a condition which is of up to 3 weeks in duration. So inflammation of the nasal mucosa up to 3 weeks is called acute rhinitis. Acute rhinitis can be viral, bacterial or irritative in types. Let's discuss the viral rhinitis also known as common cold or coryza in detail. Viral rhinitis occurs as a result of viral infections of the upper respiratory tract. Almost half of the cases of viral rhinitis are caused by rhinoviruses. Other viruses involved in causing viral rhinitis or common cold are influenza viruses, para-influenza virus, coronaviruses, respiratory syncytial virus, adenovirus and enteroviruses like Coxsackie virus. The infection is transmitted through airborne droplets from respiratory secretions of the infected person to another person. Infection can also be acquired by contacting hands or fomites of infected person as the virus lasts for 2 to 4 hours on the fomites. Incubation period is 1 to 4 days. Disease is self-limited and it lasts for 2 to 3 weeks. Three main clinical features of acute viral rhinitis are nasal congestion or nasal stuffiness, nasal discharge also known as rhinorrhea which is watery and profuse but may become a mucopurulent due to secondary bacterial invasion and excessive sneezing. Other clinical features are burning sensation at the back of the throat, low grade fever, fatigue and body aches. The factors which predispose a person to get viral infection are smoking, male nutrition, psychological stress, decreased physical activity, decreased sleep and history of previous allergies. Usually the disease is self-limited but complications can arise due to the spread of infection to the nearby structures of the body and secondary bacterial infections can also occur and these complications mostly arise in a diabetic and immunocompromised patients. Complications include acute otitis media, pneumonia, sinusitis, pharyngitis, tonsillitis, bronchitis and exacerbations of asthma and COPD. The disease is clinically diagnosed based on the symptoms and no investigation is required except when to differentiate it from the allergic rhinitis in which case you need to perform the allergy tests. Treatment is mainly supportive including bed rest, plenty of fluids and warm salt water gargles to relieve the symptoms. Medical treatment is also given to provide the symptomatic relief as no antiviral is required because the disease is self-limited. You can give the nasal congestants topically and systemically like the pseudoephedrine and epinephrine to relieve the nasal congestion. Analgesics like acetaminophen and ibuprofen are given to relieve headache, fever and myalgias. Non-aspirin analgesics should be given as the aspirin causes increased shedding of the virus. Antihistamines second generation agents like fexofenadine and sterizine can be given. Antibiotics are given when a secondary bacterial infection occur like broad spectrum drugs including the first generation cephalosporins, macrolides and amoxicillin can be given to treat this condition. Let's talk about the bacterial rhinitis. Bacterial rhinitis can be in the form of non-specific infections or diphtheritic rhinitis. Non-specific infections can be primary or secondary. 
Primary bacterial rhinitis is seen in children and is usually the result of infection with pneumococcus, streptococcus or staphylococcus. A greyish white tenacious membrane may form in the nose with which attempted removal causes bleeding. And in secondary bacterial rhinitis which is the result of bacterial infection supervening the acute viral rhinitis. Then we have the diphtheritic rhinitis in which tenacious greyish membrane covering the inferior turbinate and floor of the nose is seen. It is a rare condition but it may be primary or secondary to the facial diphtheria and may occur in acute or chronic form. Excoriation of anterior nares and upper lip may be seen in this condition. Treatment is mainly the isolation of the patient, systemic antibiotics like injection of benzyl penicillin and diphtheria antitoxin. And now the last type of rhinitis which is irritative rhinitis. Irritative rhinitis is immediate catarrhal reaction caused by exposure to dust, smoke or irritative gases like ammonia, formalin, acid fumes or trauma to the nasal mucosa. During the conditions in which intranasal manipulation is done, for example, removal of a foreign body. It is characterized by sneezing, rhinorrhea and nasal congestion like the usual rhinitis symptoms. Symptoms may pass off rapidly with removal of offending agent or they may persist for some days if nasal epithelium has been damaged. Recovery will depend on the amount of epithelial damage and the infection that supervenes. Let's talk about how the exam question will be asked from this topic of acute rhinitis. A lady presents in OPD with excessive sneezing, watery rhinorrhea, nasal obstruction, headache and low grade fever for Two days. Two. She also had body aches and irritation in the throat. What is the diagnosis and what treatment will you offer? I hope by now you all will be able to understand that the question is related to the acute rhinitis also known as common cold and the treatment has been discussed earlier in the video. So that's all about acute rhinitis. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more updates. Share it with your friends and leave a comment below for any suggestions or any problems because I read all the comments. And thanks for watching.